men's panel and it was really a excellent panel I, you know a lot of passion came out uh, while we were there uh, we, we are dealing with some real serious issues uh, that uh, affect our men today so gentlemen I'm going to ask each one of you to give me a synopsis of what you think uh, some of the, the issues are, and I'm asking you to be mindful of the time so everybody can get get uh, involved here. But uh, one of the things that came out at the uh, workshop seminar that we just did, did uh, people want practical solutions. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we know all the problems, but, you know, if we talk about the problems, what can we do to resolve some of these issues? And, uh, Rodney, let's, let's start off with you. Sure. I, I appreciate uh Dr. Kim and you for allowing me to come in. This kind of takes me back to Oakwood College Radio, 88.5 LRC Radio. Mm. But I I think what we talked about today was, and some of the solutions, the practicality of it all was, we need to become more involved. And not only in our church, but in our community. We are losing, obviously, a group of children, but it seems as if it has trickled down now into our church homes mm. and from the two other guests that are with me pastor Jackson and elder Barber they their sentiments would be the same as we need to get involved and with that getting involved I talked of prayer and supplication so a solution in my opinion would be to start earnestly praying and I think mm. we all need to have some Jacob experiences mm. at night and by the time we get off of our knees uh, we should have an answer, if not, stay on. That would be my suggestion and what I thought of the, the uh, program this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So prayer. Sure. Okay. You know, that's significant. Uh, Pastor Jackson. I, I think one of the things we have to recognize, <clears throat> it's just, this just didn't happen. Mm. Look at the city of Detroit, you know, where all of us do ministry. Uh, the city is number two in terms of violence. It has had 344 murders. It is 32% poverty and 20% unemployment. You have those type of statistics, and then your end result is prison, or death, or drugs. And so we have a much larger problem than I think we sometimes want to imagine. And so I think, I believe, excuse me, the churches have to get back involved. Mm. The churches have to come together as a coalition of individuals mm -hmm. and work as partners and not against each other or buying for members. I think once we begin to invest back into our communities, our communities will have respect for us, and then we need to become more relative to where we are and what we're dealing with. We are dealing with people in the city of Detroit with a medium income of 25000 mm -hmm. And so we have to address the issues, develop ministries to fight those issues. And then as we come together on a larger scale, we'll, we'll make a dent in Detroit. I agree with you. Excellent. But, uh, uh, Steve, what about you? Um, I think we're fighting, uh, like what I want to touch on for Pastor, uh, what's your name? Pastor Jackson. <laughs> um, said, <Burns> Church. <laughs> um, what he said about it being a, a, a team effort or a group effort. We really need to come together and support those that are not um, receiving or not getting because Christ came to give to all. And who are we to sit back and not give or to say I'm too busy to give? Mm -hmm. um, what we, practical solutions is, is, is something that we tend to want to come to after our big think tanks. You know, um, we sit and we'll talk about a problem, we'll talk about it, we'll talk about it, and talk about it, and talk about it. But then the, um, the single parent, the father that's, that's, you know, upset because he can't visit his children. Sure. The, the, um, the mother that's upset because the father won't come around to visit the children. Um, is not getting support. Um, all of these people are still, they've heard you discuss, but they haven't, they don't have anything in their hands. Christ was very good at giving short, Easy, not easy, but um, short, practical, to the point answers. You know, he told the woman, "You have five husbands, and the one you have now, you're not yours." Wow, how do you know that? 
you know, so talking, she went running, telling other things, or we'd still be there discussing. Sure. You know, we were talking about why do you have five husbands, and who is this man over here, and, and where's his background, and things like that. No, we need to get to the point, you know, when it comes to this. some of the things that came out, or some of the topics that came out in that panel were phenomenal. You know, we, we know that people are hurting, but to what degree are they hurting? We don't want, we, 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 we put the blinders on sometimes when it comes to that kind of um, ministry. So we need to get a grasp on it. I mean, companies, we, we said in the panel, companies are, are buying their fortunes on our failure, you know, as a black community. They want companies, they want prison systems to succeed so they can get a return on investment. Excellent, excellent, okay. Um, you, you mentioned uh, that talking about solutions is not enough. No, correct. You know, everybody in here agrees. How do we take action? Because we're talking about, once again, changing some behavior. Mm -hmm. And I think what happens is that a lot of us have gotten so comfortable, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, just saying us as individuals uh, in our society, in our community, a lot in our community have gotten so comfortable, comfortable with responding in a certain way and they don't see the motivation uh, or see the light at the end of the tunnel, so they do nothing. Right. You know, so how do we how do we change that thought, that thinking process? I think one of the things is we've gotten so accustomed to talking about the problem that it's made us lazy. Mm. I think with anything, it's a leadership issue. And if we're talking from the standpoint of our churches, then our leadership needs to come together at those churches and begin coming together to plan and to strategize. You know, when I, when I think of the west side of Detroit, you have Detroit Center, City Temple, Detroit Northwest. When I think of the east side, I think of Burns, Conan, Maranatha, Highland Park. We have to now strategize so that we can come together and, and not just talk about what the problem is, but to be mission focused. And I think the problem is we have lost our sense of mission. We you lose your sense of mission, you lose your sense of focus. We you lose your sense of focus, your eyes become blurry and blind. And so the way you do, you wind up in a ditch. So I think what we have to begin to do is that the leadership have to get together and to be sincere about our mission, our goals, and that is to reach and teach everyone in, in our circle. Mm -hmm. And then the Adventist church would be on the map mm -hmm. because there's no churches in the Metro Detroit that has a, a, a chain of sisterhood like us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one way, not the only way. I think when you, you brought up, Pastor, the leadership, when you're talking about four to five churches or possibly more, if we really want to peel this to the core, what you're telling me, and I don't mean to stir this, but I've actually got to possibly agree with what it is your vision is. See, I don't necessarily agree with what Burns' vision is. So I'm going to stay over in my cul-de-sac, if you will, and do what I want to do with my church. Coming together has always been a problem for us because you have your mission, I have our mission. If I'm correct, you want us to be able to come together and get this thing, because what is at stake? Salvation is at stake. And if we, can, if we continue to, as I talked about in the seminar this afternoon, our lesson, our, our quarterly lesson talks about everybody has something to do. Everybody has a gift, whatever it is, and we are not seemingly doing that. So that means the church is having some issues with reasoning together, if I use some, some Bible terminology there. So I think Art and, and Dr. Nolan, we, if it's starting at the top, we've got to kind of let go of this territory. Yes, mm. let go of this and allow to understand that it's not just about Burns Avenue or Coney Gardens or City Temple. Mm -hmm. We're all on the same team, right? Mm -hmm. Should be. That's, that, that, that sounds great. Uh, you know, I mean, I, and I, I totally agree. But we're talking about leaders coming together mm -hmm. and getting on one accord. Can now, we do it? That's right. what I'm talking about. I, I really, mm -hmm. that's why I see the difficulty. Mm -hmm. I mean, you okay. may come up with your strategy at sure. Burns, you come up with your strategy at Conan. I mean, but still, we're talking about the leadership 
at the churches mm -hmm. making a decision where the, the 16 churches or how many sure. churches we have in the metropolitan Detroit area saying we all are going to be on one accord in trying to address the issues with these men. And that seems like it's a difficult process. And I say that because I've been at the leadership, yes, yes you, you know, uh, and where, you know, we had implemented programs for all the youth in the metropolitan Detroit area. But when it came to come, talking to some of our leaders that represented the churches, they were hesitant in making moves. Mm -hmm. Look, let me give you just a, okay. a fact, if I may. The average age in America, and I've shared this with some, I've shared this with my board, the average age in America is 37 years of age. Mm -hmm. The average age in Adventist church is 61. Okay. When you have such a disparity, the mentality of thinking is different. I'm coming to your point, mm -hmm. your, your statement. A 37-year-old does not think like a 61-year-old. Mm -hmm. So if a 61-year-old is in leadership, That's right. and you talk about reaching young adults and, and young people, they're not going to think in the same mentality that someone like me who's 41. Mm -hmm. What we have to begin to do is make sure that within our churches we equip leaders that are not just older, but are also younger. Mm -hmm. So that when we come to the table, we'll be able to really come together because now we can share ideas. Uh, Henry Ford said this in terms of how to have a successful business. Mm -hmm. He said you have to have old fogies and young rebels mm -hmm. to work together mm -hmm. in order to have a successful mm -hmm. company. And we have to have that in the church as well because then that way all ages can be reached. So do I think it can be done? Yes. Mm -hmm. What I think it takes is selfless leadership for it to be done without worrying about who gets all the pomp and the glory? Mm -hmm. See, I don't care if City Temple gets all the glory. All I care about is that someone has been reached. Mm -hmm. And when we get to that point, then we can come together and not worry about who gets the glory. Because in the end, God gets the glory. And so we have a challenge within the Adventist church because it's an older church, even though it was started by young folk. Mm -hmm. And so once we get back to who we are and who what our mission is, then we can come together and say, you know what, here are the issues that we're dealing with. Poverty, housing, mental issues, abuse, relationships. Those are core issues that's floating in all of our churches. Then we can put teams together and begin to go to work, in, in my opinion. So I do believe it can work. I think it takes grassroots folk sure. to start it. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I don't, I'm not saying it cannot work. You know, I know it could work because right. it's working in other places. Right, right, you right, know? Right. Uh, right. But the thing is, how do we move the mentality? Now, now that was an excellent point which you brought up with the 61 and, uh, year old and 37 mm -hmm. year old. You're right, you know, that's an excellent point. But uh, even if it takes us to come together, say with a core group of people mm -hmm. like, like what we have in this room right now, mm -hmm. You know where we make a decision. We want to meet. Uh, if it's in, you know, if we represented the Chicagoland area, mm -hmm. you know, a core group of us come together from Chicagoland, and we meet and say, "This is what we intend to do." But what happens is, you know, what happens is in many situations is we make the decision to do something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we don't follow through. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I'm just trying to be real because, yeah. you know, this is, you know, like we're closing down camp meetings, sure. so, so I know yeah. there's enough yeah. people listening. Right. So how do we leave this place and say, okay, I understand the problem. Mm -hmm. I know some of the solutions, mm -hmm. but how do we follow through? We follow through by um, what going forward and doing. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I try to ex uh, tell all my men's ministry leaders that Every victory is a victory, no matter how small. Mm -hmm. One of my analogies is sometimes you have to be the water in the sand. Mm -hmm. And they look at me and they say, what do you mean by that? Why do, you, why do I have to be the water in the sand? Well, if you look at you know, the beach, or if you look at the, the time management uh, model that's given with the, the jar and the big rocks, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you know, you, they put the big rocks in, well, can you put any more in? Yes, you can. And they put the medium rocks in, then they put the small rocks in, then they put the pebbles in, then they put the sand in. They say, well, can you get any more in? And they go, um, no, you can't get anything more in it. So you take a picture of water and pour it in there. 
Yeah. So the water gets in there. So all of this is to help model time management. But I've used it to say that sometimes you have to be the water in the sand. You want a monumental victory. You want everybody mm -hmm. to show up on Men's Day. Mm -hmm. You want everybody to show up for this big, big program. Um, but maybe you may have one or two people. We just did a program at, um, um, that I'm trying to launch throughout the conference about a career, um, not career, but a record expungement um, and, and, and family rights uh, program where we can, they can come in, they can talk about how they can get to visit their son, what they need to pay in child support, um, how they can go about stop getting their their wages garnished and go in and, and talk to the attorney, talk to the judge, let them know what's going on. Um, and more people from the community came than even church, than church members. And I know I, I pointed out several church members, I need you to come to this because this is done for you. I did it specifically for you. You know, I know that men are hurting. I know that men want to see their kids. I know men are, are sick of getting money taken from them and being called dogs, dirty, lazy, nasty. So when something is put there for you and you go out into the community and you're passing out tracks and want and that to come in and then you don't see any of your brothers come, that's a discouraging thing. But then you look around and you see the community come in, then that's an encouraging thing. Because we have posted this all around the different churches, barbershops. Um, some people have mentioned that people came on the streets of members of Conan and said that I hear you're having this at your church. They're like, what are you talking about? And they've been in the bulletin for a month. Mm -hmm. You know, I have posters up and everything. But I think it starts there um, with um, doing what you can and, and build, you know, from where you are doing it. I think the other thing is, and I agree with you, I think we have to start being intentional. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to get back to commitment and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. but, but let me be a little bit more frank, if I may. Mm -hmm. I think we have to also get to the heart of the matter. I think our folk get more concerned about being Adventists mm -hmm. than being Christians. Mm -hmm. I think we, we spend so much time uh, making ourselves look like Adventists mm -hmm. that we hide the hurt. So when I think about what you just said, mm -hmm. if I really came to get my record expunged, right. who would say something about it? Right. Mm -hmm. right. So I think because people are not free to be themselves mm -hmm. where they are mm -hmm. and be accepted, mm -hmm. I think that's the challenge we face. Because when we look at this religion, this faith, we are an intellectual people asking us to go into an impoverished neighborhood mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as a reminder of who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't want that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a famous preacher, he, he's dead now, and I, I forgot his name, mm -hmm. but he says, one of the ways I can help poor people is not to be poor. Mm -hmm. What was his name? You know? I'm just going to say amen. <laughs> and, and so, we have to have a mentality mm -hmm. where we help people understand. Mm -hmm. And so when, we're, when we as a church masquerade in costumes mm -hmm. on Saturday, mm -hmm. it's hard for us then to reach a community that reflects who we are. Mm -hmm. We can't reflect it in our churches. Mm -hmm. And so you can't expect folk to jump on the bandwagon, mm -hmm. but we have to preach to the heart of the matter. Mm -hmm. And we're not doing that. You know, I know folk who are more concerned about folk being vegetarian, <coughs> Mm -hmm. than anything else jewelry. and you know the wearing of jewelry and all that mm -hmm. all that comes but we have to be intentional mm -hmm. on wanting to see people saved mm -hmm. and wanting to see people out of the dump right. mm -hmm. and out of the pit but here's the other thing if you've never been in the pit then you don't know what it's like you, preach. you, preach. you don't know what it's like to, <laughs> to know what someone's in the pit yeah. so you can't even see the signs yeah. you'll just think they're having a bad day when they really going through hell right. and so we have to get back to being Christians yeah. who love people mm -hmm. and who are compassionate. So do, do you think, you know, because what I'm getting from you right now is the fact that because of who I represent, I have to play the role and, and be what those people want me to be in order to be a good Adventist or a good Christian. Yes. So yeah, that's I think that's what he's saying. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Which, if Pastor is saying it, just to piggyback, we need to take that off, mm -hmm. take that mask off, so that what un understand what ha what happens for our community when they see us acting and responding with masks on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want help. Because I can see, just as young people and being a teacher, mm -hmm. I can see whether or not you really want to help. That, mm -hmm. You know, are you opening the church this week mm -hmm. and, and your nose is really northward? Mm -hmm. Or are you really compassionate about and, and have compassion in me for 
my unemployment, my hunger, mm -hmm. my smelly clothes, mm -hmm. all of these things. So we've gotten uppity in our doctrines mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with Bible. Mm -hmm. It's doctrine and Bible are two different things. We have gotten away from that and it's showing to the world. Mm -hmm. That church on the corner mm -hmm. aren't really community driven. Mm -hmm. They haven't come, they've been on that corner for 30 years and they haven't been mm -hmm. to my house and I've been in this home for 25 years and they haven't come to it at all. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to pull it off and, and become more compassionate and really understand and that's what Jesus's message and his mission was about. I think let, transparency. Let, let me so, just say yeah, this. Boy, yes. Our message or our faith mm -hmm. did not produce that. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at the history of our church, it's a community oriented, mm -hmm. mission focused, mission driven, mission, mission led church. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in between, mm -hmm. something happened. we've allowed it to put us on the pedestal where we think we're better. Mm -hmm. You know, just because I know what the mark of the beast is, don't mean I'm going to be saved. Mm -hmm. Four or three. And just because I can quote the 2300 day prophecy, mm -hmm. don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it just helps me understand the time that we're living in. But, but Christ says when you do to the least of these, mm -hmm. and that's the principle that our church has always stood on. But because of us as people, we've allowed ourselves to be segregated so much so that we're now not in touch with reality mm -hmm. of our community. Okay, now, now let me ask this. In what you just said, we've allowed ourselves to be segregated. Is it just the black community that has gotten to that point where we have become more attracted to the way things should be and uh, how we project ourselves instead of going out to the community and, and doing the mission work? Is it more within the black community uh, or is it uh, something else? Church yeah. Just church wide and as just, an organization. Yeah. yeah. Mm. In my experience, um, I have to say no, it's not just in the black community. Um, I, I, I see churches set themselves up. They'll, they'll build a school and they'll build a, a church onto it and then they'll come in and they'll have worship and it's not in the middle of the mm -hmm. community. You know, and then people start building houses. And they, they have everything real nice, you know, over there and they just stay in there. I see a church dying, you know, from the inside because sure. the youth are leaving and they're saying there's nothing, there's nothing here to keep us, you know, grounded. There, there's no new faces. You're doing the same thing time and time again. And one of the things that is really um, uh, bugging me is how we tend to attack each other's music. Mm. You know, um, we want to say that, oh, well, and, and Walter, Walter Vice, Pastor Vice that was here, really hit it, you know, hit it on the head last night when he says, you know, you can either have a two live service or you can have a dead vanilla Protestantism you know, mm -hmm. service, or where you just sit there and you're not doing anything, you're barely clapping or something like that. He said the way the church was founded was through energy and, and through, through drive, and how um, 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 Elder White would go up and down the aisles pounding on his Bible, you know, getting excited in the Word and talking to the people with enthusiasm and vigor, instead of just standing up at the pulpit and saying a couple of things, you might as well be, you know, I mean, you might as well be one of our so, southern non-sister Catholics. I'm so you say it's, 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 it's church worldwide. It's, it's worldwide. I mean, yeah. It's worldwide. I mean, and if you look at the, if you go to Sabbath school, which I know a good 75% huh. of us may not, you know, go to Sabbath school, and you see these mission stories that are going on in different countries, they're turning the world upside down. That's right. And we're sitting here in America, you know, coming to church and, in, in, you know, in, in air conditioning, and going and sitting on our pews. We don't, when's the last time anybody in, in the city of Detroit has had a tenant? Mm. Besides Highland Park, because I know they, <laughs> he's been out there, Pastor Bourne's been out there a lot. It's, it's been a while. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I do. I, I don't you remember. You had one last year? When you were at Northwest. Northwest. So Northwest. 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 Oh, so you don't count. You're Michigan. <laughs> yeah. See, that, that's the problem, right? There you go. That's segregation. Yeah. Segregation. There you go. Well, just, just to make you feel better, we do want to burn. Oh, amen. Amen. When, when is that? Coming in the fall? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so, no, we're going to do one. We're going to plan it for next year. Okay. But we're doing some things this year with some tents outside. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's what we're doing. But, but I think, again, it's a North American problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you look at Revelation 3, we're lukewarm mm -hmm. as a church, but it doesn't have to be as individuals. Mm -hmm. And I think the challenges we face is is 
when we as a race didn't have as many resources, we were more compassionate. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. We were sure. more of a community. Mm -hmm. And I was telling my son the other day that when I was his age, we didn't need anything to to entertain, entertain us. Mm -hmm. We found solace mm -hmm. in just playing outside and sure. making up games. And I think because we have an abundance of resources, we tend to shy away from being mission oriented. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had the privilege of pre preaching overseas. Mm -hmm. And when I go to those third world countries, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see folk on fire for the yes, Lord. Yes, indeed. Because yes, indeed. they are mission oriented yes, and they want to share the little bit of the gospel that they know. Mm -hmm. and, right. and they don't have much. I, you know, I preached in Guyana, one of the colleges, and, and there were kids walking mm -hmm. days just to get there to hear a word. Hear, wow. hear a word. Mm -hmm. Didn't throw any food away. Mm -hmm. Sabbath experience was totally different. Even though there may not have been much to do, they made things to do. Mm -hmm. And I think because we are losing, I, I don't want to lose that, mm -hmm. we're losing sense of our mission. And our mission, if we lose that, we lose our identity. Mm -hmm. And then we don't know how to reach back, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. as, a, as a mission. Mm -hmm. And we can't lose it. For me, that's the major issue mm -hmm. that we face. Mm -hmm. Mission, then our identity. Mm -hmm. That's why we're struggling, I believe. Mm -hmm. Because how often do we talk about our mission? Often we talk about what our what our goals are, what we need to do, and who we are. You know, we say we're seventy Adventists. Okay, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, beyond the it's name. Mm -hmm. You know, we got this campground. Mm -hmm. All these leaders here. We can we can spend some time in, in the loose time. Mm -hmm. Strategize. Can okay, we go back to Detroit? Go back to Chicago. How can we as churches make an impact? Right. We shouldn't be just right. together at camp meeting mm -hmm. right. at different churches. Right. This should this thing should take us. Send us back and say, you know what, we can work together. Because mm -hmm. that's the way camp meetings used to be. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just, you know, just getting spiritually fat. Mm -hmm. It was, it had a purpose to it. Mm -hmm. And the folk had a mission. Mm 